<laughs> oh, man, I don't hate hey. But, uh, I'm Captain Crush, but everybody calls me Shorty. I'm the shortest trucker out here, but God dog it, I'm going to get the job done. <laughs> I don't let that height stop me. I drive, I done been on top of the trailers, you know, I, I done been on top of mountains. So I don't care. Height don't bother me. I was going to climb, I was going to climb up there like that. Nope, nope, not, not no, well, uh, if it was hooked up under there and you can yeah. get on that catwalk, you can kind of scale it. But don't try it now, man, because if you come down, you may put a misstep or something. You know. There ain't no steps up there. And normally, well, you have, you wouldn't have to get up there. Uh, the other guy, he, he would have got up there to cut like that knot off. See that knot right there? Yeah. He would have got up there to cut that off if there was one up there. You know what I mean, he should have cut that one off. He didn't see it. You know. But uh, but long enough, now I've had to climb up on it, because especially with the paper what I'm talking about, oh, it'll get hung in there quick, because you got just branches, you know what I mean? It, you'll, get a, uh, you'll get a scrap hung up in that thing quick. But um, like I said, man, the main thing about trucking, it's fun. I just love driving. Uh, but trucking pays well. You know, you work hard at it, save your money, learn to work on your own truck, change your own oil. That's a minimum, change your own oil. Yeah. Hell, I, I done got to the point now where I rebuild everything. And um, I can uh, probably rebuild, I mean, I will rebuild one on the side of the road here. I broke down, uh, my, my rear end went out on me in Meridian, Mississippi. And my good buddy, if he didn't mention it, talking about pulling me back to the house, his, his, my brother, this is my younger, my brother. He would have, I would have took that rear end out right where I stood, which was in a Walmart, Lowe's parking lot. And I would have fixed that bad boy right there, okay? Because I'm not waiting on these people to come get me, which they're going to take two, three hours. And when they get there, they're going to charge you. But So, I mean, it's best to work on your own stuff. Learn all you can, not as much as you can. Learn all you can and then some. Because, like I said, that's what will kill you. The money, you'll make that money. But when, but when you break down and you got to go to these shops and you might need a... You might can get by with a shade tree, but you know what you may get with a shade tree, 50-50. But if you go to these dealerships, you, you can if get you hurt. go to these dealerships here in Mississippi, I was complaining yeah, Mississippi about ready. Freightliner, uh, Texas. 125, 125 an hour. And I was complaining. Tell me about Texas. The yeah, international dealership, the first dude said, yeah, we charge 125 an hour. I'm not, I mean, my bad, he said we charge 225 an hour. And when he said that, I was like, and in my head, I was thinking the price of the part. I was like, no, how much y'all charge per hour? Two twenty-five. No, not the price for the part. How much y'all charge per hour? We charge two twenty-five an hour. An hour to work on my truck. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not getting yeah. it done here. And that's the thing about it. And I mean, if you're in that position where you got to have that professional, where you you need somebody that knows not only that, that that not only has like a computer, but also has the wiring. That if you have some kind of problem, where you are you just gotta go to them uh, dealerships. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, you gotta do it. But other than that, you want to try to work on as much as you can. You know. Also, when you're getting your truck worked on, or whether you're working on your truck, get all the stuff that you can get done on it at one time. If you know something needs needs worked on, like the cab mounts for my truck. I should have waited until I drove home and had it done, but I was thinking, okay, cab mounts were probably the problem, and I had them, man, that was $1,600. Now, I could have done it myself if I'd have had, no. if I'd have had my <laughs> tools with me. Like, if I'd have had my tools with man. me, come on. I had some of yeah, my tools, but I didn't have all of them. little jack up on it, which you really... With well, the cab mounts in the front, you'd have to put yeah. a bottle jack. But like, if you ever have to change, if you ever have to change your cab airbags, you just pinch the line off. I mean, once we'll start doing, I'll start doing some videos uh, for it when got, I start doing the work on them. But this is just a quick tip. You Say if you dump? get an airbag, huh? You got the air dump. Oh yeah, air dump, uh, and they got the air valve and the valve. Even if you don't have an air dump, you still have, all trucks have a leveler. Yeah, that's right there where you can just undo it and you can pick the tra truck up. Or lower it down, you know, and um, you just like if you need to get up on the trail, like right now, I'm gonna have to lift this when I get ready to back back up on this trail. If the truck's actually lower than the trail is right here at this because it's kind of a, a downgrade, and I'll have to undo it and, and bring it up a little bit. But I'm gonna back up under it so far 
then lift it up so that it'll catch it and I can back on up under. Is there a piece of metal on your face? That's a piece of plastic. That That's the cap of the grease. Okay. I had left it up there. It, 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 you know, that's plastic. Make sure you grease your fifth wheel. Oh, all the time. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yes, yes, sure yes. Make sure you yes. grease your fifth wheel in your once to twi uh, twi uh, Once a week, I would say, Yeah. I, I I'd say once, once a week. week. Well, yeah, I mean, well... I mean, once a week, once every two weeks. You want to grease your truck every yeah. two weeks, but I think, and I've been, this is a brand new fifth wheel, and I just think every once a week, man. I agree with mine once a week because when I, if I do it two weeks and I un, and I pull off up under, I start seeing open metal, like metal, yeah. you know what I mean? Like naked metal yeah. or whatever with no grease on it. And that worries me because, of course, metal against metal is going to wear, yeah. and you want that grease up under there so once a week, pull that sucker off Monday and see all that grease. I just grease it. I'm going to go around there and scrape all that around the side. I actually put too much. And you need to put it right in those, those little packs that you see. I was just about to ask you that. It, 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 they break up. Put your grease right in that area. Because if you do it like I've been doing it, yeah. I'm really wasting. I don't, you're wasting it because yeah. it's going to ooze out. I just go behind myself and scrape it around and put it back in there. That's what I do. Yeah, because, I mean, it's, you know. And I, I need to start just putting it right in the center where you put those little pads at because once you hook up, it's going to splatter out. Yeah. And that's what it's doing, but I'm putting so much that it's pushing all the way out. Yeah. You know? But I'd rather have more than not enough. So yeah. Yeah, you got the weight of logs, too. Yeah. And I mean, that's, uh, yeah, because when you're turning with these logs and you're going any truck, but when you got that weight on them, logs just, we're, <laughs> excuse me, we're above, we're 80, we're above 80. I mean, we're, log trucks are legally 84,000. We got what we call harvest permits, but when you're in these woods, you don't know what's on there. You may have 90,000 pounds on there coming out of those woods, you know, you never know. And uh, so that's why I said, oh, that's better to do. But back to the airbags, if you ever have to work on an airbag, which I got to, uh, I've done all four of them, but I, I, I got to start putting the videos together. But you take your airlines and loose. Is that balance issue? No. And the reason why the tire? If you want to, if you want to do it now, I'm not gonna say it, it is bad, but just like I was saying back there, now I'm not gonna say that it's not legal. I'm just saying that they're not gonna really look at it. Like talking about, they'll warn me about that tire, and now I won't get a ticket. But now if it was completely bald, or, or they they still warn me. You know, I've been in this a while. They still warn you. But if you still have some wire sticking out. Yeah, it's got to come off because they say, you yeah. know, and I've had that happen because you, you're going to be running them and I run them. you got to run these tires. I, just, I got two brand new tires on the back of my truck right now. That's a thousand dollars for two tires. Yeah. And I buy brand new tires. I buy virgin tires. So, and those are cheap ones. I mean, those are the cheap ones. You know, four hundred dollars a piece. Because you get, you get the Firestone and Goodyear. Yeah, which you pay it for them. So you tires. All your tires, you want good tires. But I spend I put the, the, the real the Firestone on the front. They'll last forever. But back here, you can kind of improvise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that front, that ain't nothing to play with. Right. On the steel tires, yeah. There ain't nothing to play with. Don't don't put put your, spend your, put your money up there. The back, the ones, um, they got China sent some tires over here that are normally the cheaper ones. You can run those. They'll just wear out quicker. All right. And they're, if you got the money, they'll be worth it because, you know, like with the Firestones on the front, they'll, they'll last forever. But these other ones, these double coins and these Zellos or whatever, they'll give you a year. As long as you keep air in them, you know, keep them, you know, level, you know, that they'll last you a while. You'll get your money's worth out of them, but you'll get way more if you spend that extra $300 per tire, $200, because you'll get like two, three years maybe out of them, to be honest with you. What are you keeping your air at? What air? Yeah, you know, tires. Oh, 90. I keep my airs at 90 in the summer. Specifically, don't put, they say 100 on the tire. But let me tell you something, it's really important. These tires in the summertime, that ground is hot, that air is going to fluctuate. It's going to fluctuate. That's just a given. All right. Now, if you got 100 pounds in there, and I did this one time, matter of fact, with the same, this, this trailer, but that truck. I went down the highway, big load of logs, and I'm hauling ass. Next thing you know, boom, I'm on 49. So I pull over, and I'm checking it. It's hot as heck, man. I'm out there, and uh, something just said, check your other tires. Every one of them motherfuckers, excuse me, every one of them had 120, 125 pounds in it. That's because it went, it jumped up. But now I put 90 in the summer yeah. because it gives it that give room, and they're not going to blow out. 
they'll wear out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the difference. You don't ever, if you put too much air in them, uh, you may get a, new, a brand new tire to blow out because it's too much pressure. Pressure busts a pipe. But I put 90 in there. Anything below 90, 80, 80, 80 pounds of pressure, you still got a flat tire. You want 90 and above. And I, I, I use 90. I recommend 90, suggest or whatever. You do what you want to do. But that's why, because um, the 90 gives you that room. When they get hot, they'll probably go up to 100, 105, which is perfectly fine. That's that's the normal range. And then when they cool off, they'll come back down. But like I said, if you got 100 in there and you're hauling down the highway, and like I said, with these triple digit, uh, this triple digit um, heat, heat that we got now, man, you'll exceed 120, you know, and that ain't good. Like I say, put 90 in there, try it. And like I say, you'll see your tires wear out. You'll never have to worry about it. You should never, I haven't, have to worry about a tire blowing. That's just simple. And I've, I, that's my gospel. And it works for me for years. That's what I do. You know. And Lucas all. I put Lucas in everything. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I should uh, solicit them for a commercial because Lucas... When I saw the little gadget in there in the store, and it, it coached those gears, man, I put it, I put it in my cars, I put it in the rear end, I put it in the transmission. Thing. Would be the same thing as using fifteen fifty. No, uh, no, because see, gear all is thicker than Lucas, but Lucas, to me, it's gear, whatever gear Lucas all, is. no, no, whatever Lucas is, it sticks. You see how gummy it looks, yeah. gummy, but even gear oil is just thicker. Yeah. And I mean, that's all it is. All your other oils are thicker, but Lucas coat stuff, man. That's why they re they uh, uh not recommend, but they brag about no cold starts. Yeah. Because when you start a car in the morning, all your engines, all your oil is in the pan, so everything up here is just just metal, and it, it's got such a thin layer of oil on it. Uh, you, you're gonna wear. You know, when you crank the car up in the morning, it's gonna wear for a second. You're metal to metal for a second. You know what I mean? Until, until it, it all it pumps it, until it all pumps up, you know, and then it's got to go up to the head and fall back down, you know, or be slung up. I'm sorry, let me correct myself. And the bottom, the uh, as the crankshaft turns, it's slinging oil around. That's how it gets lubricated. While the engine's going like that, it's slinging it. So, but the first few minutes, first few really minute, thirty seconds to a minute, it's metal on metal. And think about it. That's every time you crank your car from a cold start every morning. You know, that's so, why you don't crank that sucker up and take off. No, there you go. Crank it up, let it run for a second. Do not rev it up. I see people that do that, and I don't like that. I mean, I, you know, they'll crank a, cr a car up, and then they'll rev it up like a. Uh, it ain't gonna get hot. It ain't gonna get hotter, or it ain't gonna warm up no faster. No, there ain't no mosquitoes out in West Texas. Sure. Ain't no it's mosquitoes. Too hot. They left. They came over here. That ain't no water over there. It <laughs> rained three times while I was there. Man, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I I just don't know. I I, I we're going to talk about the pneumatic thing. I may go over there. I don't know. And I'm I promise. You, I think I'm probably gonna move this house. We go. We talking about something. Yeah, else. Yeah, talking we about put that. Yeah, we're yeah, talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> JPTV three thousand. Peace.